I get the cheat code, I'm a beast They should've never let me out of lease Stop out of cap, I'm just tryna see You really back what you talk on the beat They put me in, I'ma walk on the beat I eat my plate and it make me obese I been pushing lyrics like a kingpin And when the day we got no Hey, Good what's morning. up guys? How are you? I like that T-shirt, bro. Grateful Dead. I'm a. I think. Are you a dead I'm not head? a deadhead, but I have gone to Grateful Dead concerts. Mm. I went. To, we used to. We used to. We used to hang out in the parking lot to the Grateful Dead mm. concerts because that's where all the best. That's where all the, all the best, best drugs were. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time ever having a gel tab and Felix the Cat and Flying Pyramid Acid and stuff. Was at a Grateful Dead concert. Grateful Dead. They yeah, yeah, people they, traveled, they put bro. Out some dunks. And um, I have all but one pair. Didn't one of their guys start making the ties? One of their guys Jerry started Garcia. making, was it Jerry mm -hmm. Garcia started making ties and then donating the money, I think mm -hmm. it was, to the kids' hospital or something. And he had exactly. some real fire-ass ties. I have mm -hmm. some Jerry Garcia ties. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got some good merchandise. Mm -hmm. There are. And this is a, a, a 70s rock and roll band? 60s? Yeah, 60s. 60s rock and roll band? 60s and, and 70s. And merchandise is still yeah. live and well kicking in 2023. They have these uh, yes. bear dunks that are worth the a lot of money. And they're, so and they're those, right? synonymous, Grateful Dead synonymous with acid. Yes, with the psychedelic stuff. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. How many how many Grateful Dead bear dunks are there? Uh, There's well, more than two. They have the Papa Bear and all these other ones, but then they have the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. Um, it's a three pack. It's an orange Ooh. bear, green bear, and a yellow bear. Oh wow! I got I the know yellow they had and three. green. I've seen the two. I didn't know they had the three. Why not orange? Yeah. Orange is hard to get. It was ah. only exclusive to a specific skate shop. Mm -hmm. So they're like three. So grand. if you want to suck up to Ferrari, what size do you wear? Nine and a half. There we go. They're like. To twenty five hundred. Like grails. Though. Yeah. That's kind of fire though. The orange, I wonder, the orange I wonder, bears. Isn't there like an NBA no player that wears these like exotic sneakers to play in? There's like some NBA player that is yes. like, he buys uh, all of the I sneakers and plays yes. in them. Yes, he'll would play. You, would you wear those in like out to skateboard? <laughs> if you yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, I skateboarded. Yeah, if you skateboarded yeah. it. Is that a word? Skateboarded it? I'm, you're not one of those people that, there are certain shoes you put up and certain shoes you wear every day regardless? Uh, if I really, really like a shoe, I'll get two. Uh, one, wear, one to wear, one to spare. I love it. Nice. Yeah. If yeah. I really, really like it. You got to be gotta mindful, wear, though. I've wear seen your people, shoes, man. The people grab like the, 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 shoes. the, the sole of shoes. the shoe and they just put their finger. It dries out from not being worn or whatever it is. Mm. Like the that rubber too. gets so stale. They but you, you also want to wear them apart. so they can get a, a wear because they're just going to deteriorate over, over time anyway. Anyways, Fuck right. It. Wear your shoes, man. All right. Good concepts. Uh, we, good concepts. We was talking uh, off air. We talk about a whole bunch of stuff off the camera. And now I have nothing to say. Emotions <laughs> and feelings. We're talking about emotions and feelings. Yes. And, I, and the Grateful Dead is probably the best segue into it because their music was very psychedelic, very feeling based. And it yeah. was. Whole, you know, that whole love circle. But I it. haven't really done drugs since I was in high school. And that was. You're missing out. Dinosaur ages ago. You're missing out. I don't know about the designer drugs and the pills and all that good stuff, but. Not, nonetheless, emotions. And, I'm, and maybe, could it be that all of these, these chemicals now that some of these people are taking or that yeah, these kids they're, are on now, they're, they're plus their emotional issues? Yes. If you've already got issues, I could see where self-medicating would exacerbate what kind of led, What kind of led it to us was, we were talking about emotions and feelings and social media. Yes. And how when people appreciate the fact that a follower becomes a fan when they feel that connection. Yep. Yes. And it was because I think somebody had commented on, on one of our posts recently, like, man, I just get on here to market. I don't be on social media to do nothing but market my, and I'm like, you know, marketing a product without trying to make a connection is kind of pointless. And a follower yeah. isn't a fan automatically. A, a it fan is needs to be earned from first being a follower. And, Correct. You know, I, what, what do you think an independent artist should do to turn their following into a fan base. And that's interesting because be, we've been having be authentic, these conversations. Tell their story, yeah. connect with people, talk connect about who they are and what they like and what if that's boring? What they enjoy. I I think it's I think it's boring with everybody at first because yeah. we all hate talking about ourselves. But I think once you open up and you really get into it, we're all different and we've all got cool shit going on about us. We just don't realize it's cool because we live in our own you bodies. Tap into it. Like who would who would think maybe Kingpin is a chef on the low? And you put that out there, and now people are tuned into you because they like Kingpin. Yes. But also, they want to get, they want to see what you're going to cook next because now they didn't even know that you're this dope chef, and your wife doesn't cook, you cook. Right. And you're and you're a chef of not weed. I'm not, by the way. And she is. And you're a chef of weed. Like, remember, we went to California, and and Mel and I, my friend and I, tried to kill him. We went it to work. the. We went. We, it did not work. 
We couldn't do the it. Like we went baby. to the dispensary and we found the strongest weed possible. We spent probably close to six grand on weed and and Didn't gummies work. trying to trying Didn't to kill work. him, just trying to knock him out. Mm -mm. But you know, on the flip side of that, right? You did your research. You found something that I like. We were joking earlier with Ferrari. Yeah. If you like, you know, you know he likes shoes. Give him what he likes. From an artist's perspective, I think trying to make content that they feel is going to connect with an audience instead of understanding the platform and how the audience right. consumes the content on that platform is where most of them don't, they don't, they don't right. make that connection. So instead of pushing content that's going to connect with somebody, they push content with a goal to get views or clicks or likes or comments. And that's really not helping because if they do get a like or uh, we've said it, attention doesn't equal retention. Correct. So if somebody likes a picture now, does that mean they're going to come back and like another one? What's going to keep them coming back? What's going to keep the them connection. engaged? What's the connection? And I think most independent artists are, are failing in that point. And because they're failing to make that connection, it's having a negative effect on their mental health mm. because they're feeling that what they're making is not enough. So that they're feeling efforts, they're not worthy? And they're not worthy. They're not accomplishing enough. It's not moving fast that. enough. And they're giving up. So they're giving up and they're saying, all right, this is not working. They're giving Screw in, it. yeah. I had a, because um, I, I check my DMs, you got artists call always DM me. And I had someone that was, was consistently DMing me for questions. So I gave him my number. We had a conversation literally the day before yesterday. And he was like, man, I have such and such allotted for this. I said, okay, so what's the plan for after that? So long story short, he really didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of just reset our conversation by saying, hey, do you even know who your fans are? What they like about you? Mm. What, they, wh what type of songs they like about you? He had no answer to that. And I said, well, let's start. Let's reset. Start there. Start there and start paying attention to what your fans like. Pay attention to what the people like. And if you don't even know if you have fans, start with the people that you know that support you for real. So start there and then expand. And I said, do you have a job? He was like, yes. I was like, you got to go to that job every day. You got to clock in, right? He was like, yeah. I said, well, you have to clock in on the music. You have to clock in on figuring out who your fans are. You have to clock in and figure out why, what, how they like you. You have to do that, figure that out, and then you start marketing. I think you also have to make definitions and define who those people are and what their roles are. I can be, <coughs> excuse me, I can be a supporter and not be a fan. Your grandmother can be your supporter and not be a fan of the music that you make, raping Agreed. and pillaging and doing all of this stuff. Uh, again, <laughs> yeah. understanding well, and assigning it. the roles or assigning the responsibilities to those certain individuals, it all comes back to that inventory and talking about who it is that you have around you, what it is that you're trying to build, who it is you're trying to make a connection with. I think we've discovered this in the last maybe four or five days, just having conversations together with artists and about artists and their campaigns is when you ask them who they think they're, that's listening to them, it's nine times out of 10, very dramatically different than who is actually listening Agreed. to them. Correct. You, make, you Correct. make music for a certain set of people. <clears throat> you think a certain set of people are listening. And then there's the really who Who's is listening. listening? Yeah. And we can only arrive to that number through consistency, through repetition, and through accuracy. What do I mean by accuracy? Mapping, claiming. If I've got 50 profiles, I can't figure out where, where their numbers are. Because it's um, there's a percentage of it that's missing or that's skewed or that's inaccurate or that's misleading. I need to have an overall look at it. And I think for most artists, most businesses, this has nothing to do with music. Lash technicians, website designers, uh, consultants, you name it. Most of them imagine how the business wants to work in their mind. Very few of them I just seen somebody the other day said, man, I, I've sold, uh, I've gotten re re recognized for this and recognized for that, recognized for this, and I still can't sell any records. And then somebody just came in and offered the voice of logic and was like, well, because none of those accolades have to do with marketing. Right. <laughs> Made right. all the sense in the fucking world to me, bro. Right. Because at one point I was with them. Like, what do you mean you're so decorated and you've never been able to sell any of this on the flip side? But because none of that shit has to do with sales. Yeah. And exactly. understanding that. So as an independent- Battle rappers go through that. Oh. They're frustrated because they can win battles, but they can't sell music. They can't sell. And you know, you know? And, and can I tell you something? And in lieu of recent events, have you guys, did you, met, have you, you follow battle rap on Twitter? Mm -hmm. You guys follow battle I rap on Twitter? I don't, but I am, I am a fan I'm, of the Me the and my genre. wife are a fan of battle rap and battle yes, rap is in shambles right now. It is. Mm. <laughs> yes. And 
they've been releasing, come to find out some of the lawyers for Eminem, not sure how, the, how, how true this is or not, but some of the lawyers from Eminem are now the URL lawyers. Really? Yeah, Interesting. which oh, is wow. like the NFL of battle rap for those okay. of you guys that are interested. So there's a whole bunch of um, behind the scenes stuff going on and contracts are now being put up. Oh, shit. And lawyers are now being involved. So it's become the WWE. They say battle rap is battle rapping right now. That's the thing. (laughs) Me and the wife were joking about that today. Like, what does that mean? Battle rap is battle rapping. battle rapping. But I say all that to say this, is that in this business, if if the contract (laughs) that they put online is correct, this contract says that said battle rapper would not pursue or advance any musical promotions for five years. That's crazy. Meaning they could only... Be a battle rapper. No. They couldn't release no music. No. Well, according, we know that's not right, but you know, just from what the contract is Shit. pushing, it's saying that not only can you not compete with anybody else, but you can't push no music. Damn. So when you sit back and you cross your arms and you think about it and you say, well, is that why some of these guys that have 70 and 80 million views worth of traffic have never been able to release successfully a record because contractually they've limited themselves from being able to do that? Makes you wonder, man. It makes you wonder. I think my wife had pointed out to me. Shout out my wife, man. She's always giving me information. They were doing a study on college kids. And college kids were willing to give up all of their personal information in exchange for a slice of pizza. All of their information for one slice of pizza? Come down, give us your name, dorm, phone number, wow. email address, sign up and give us, and you get a slice of pizza I've for I've seen people do that for sweepstakes. Like not even to get something other than the promise of college maybe winning a prize. always hungry. But guess what, though? that way. Every they're, time they're starving all the time. Uh, uh, Spotify has banned the use of Chat GPT inside their building. Interesting. Um, Who has Spotify? Spotify. Hmm. They just announced it this morning. If I'm not mistaken, it's five companies that have just announced a ban on Chat GPT inside their company. Yeah, because fighting it is the way to win. Well, well, because these guys understand that open AI is exactly that. It's open, so everybody is teaching it how to program it. So some of these guys feel that their keystrokes and how they process or their feng shui or their flow of productivity is specific to their, is being used without their consent. Maybe that's something that a trademark secret or an industry secret. Right. So what we say to that is, hey man, all that shit that you thought you can just keep locked in a cage, all that information, you got to come off of that right now. And everybody's going to be able to, it's like saying they held us down for this long and then they took their hand off and okay, now we're even. No, we're not. We still have a lot of catching up to do. But once they take their hand off and everybody gets access to it, it can all change for the better or the worse. Yeah. Understanding that information for an artist, how they could use social media, how they could use AI and how they use research. Never in a million years that I think when I was in science class that I would ever apply that 30 years later down the line. I will also Data. say uh, artists need to be figure out some way to get enlightened uh, because if you don't, <clears throat> you'll just continuing... You'll, you'll continue to do the exact same thing, which is think you're, that you're doing a, something, but you're not doing anything. Um, because may, sometimes, you know, we're in a, a, a space where if you look like you're doing some shit, it's acceptable to people who don't know the business like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a, We have a problem with that because it's the smoke and mirrors theory that where you can look like everything is going great, especially as an artist. You could look like it. And artists never really get enlightened until later. Sometimes it's even when they not lucky, where they have a situation, they start making some money, and then they say, wait a minute, how come I didn't get paid for such and such? <laughs> the enlightenment happens it usually, later. It usually takes about three years till artists realize that they're getting jerked, in my experience. It should happen before you even... It should happen now in the beginning right. stages because... Well, if you know, you know. You but educate if you yourself. you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. But I don't think they care to know because if you care just, to know, you just want to stop make music. what you're doing. Yeah, you, just want, you can't yeah. just make music now. In 2023, no. you cannot no. just make music. No. I mean, Those you days can, are over. but you won't see the success that you want just making music. And it's if you do, over. you're going to give up a lot for it. Almost everything. Everything, of course. Yeah. I, 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 somebody said something and, and it, it stuck with me. I, I want to say it was John Wu. Shout out to John Wu. In the music business, if you're always doing what you feel is right, you're always going to feel unsuccessful. Yeah. Oh that's my God, that's true. Fact. I if I had that. ever heard that's one. True. I agree with that. Shout yeah. out to John Wu. If you're always Huge doing shout out to John what, Wu. You, what you I feel Wu. is right in this business, you're always going to feel like you're unsuccessful because feelings is the darkest place that we could be in this business. Let me also say shout out to my boss, Corey Sparks <laughs> over at Warner Records. 
he challenges me every day to be a better person, be a better music executive. Executive, yeah. I don't have, outside that. of you two, um, and I shout out to that. Antonio, I don't really have people that has done that before to challenge me to do better, do better, and do do more. better at certain things. Of course. And I, if I was ignorant, I could be saying, man, stop hating on me, bro. I'm doing the best I can. That's usually what people are saying. That's usually what artists do because they're not getting challenged. I don't even think it's being challenged. I think you're being groomed. Right. But I'm saying that I'm just kind of trying to correlate that to the artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shit, good shit, good shit, good shit. I'm just being honest with you, bro. I, I say that to say, I just kind of use myself as an, as an example. I have the mental uh, acumen to say, okay, I understand right. why he's right. on me. Right. Usually, if an not everyone is, does. If an artist is being pushed or challenged to get better and become greater, they refuse it. Right. Because it's like, nah, I'm already good. I'm already the goat. I'm already good. And because they don't realize what causes they can the issue. Be. Right. Correct. Yeah. It causes their resentment. This it is causes normal. that I think friction. Also, we're comparing like entrepreneurs and people that work to artists, and it's a little bit different. Like it's right brain versus left brain. Correct. Artists think differently. Right. I think the most dangerous artist Warner. is somebody who's True. told that he's super Agreed. successful and doesn't see the success. If an artist is constantly be re being being reminded by successful people who they equate success with how talented they are and they're not seeing the the level of success of who they perceive as head? least talented artists around them, then they start to build resentment. They start to become unworkable. Yeah. And then and they angry. transition to the- I get that. I don't want to do it to, I'm going to do the extreme to get it. And then once I do the extreme to get it, now it's everybody's fault why it's not working. Right. And I think we see that progression in artists more often than not where it's like, man, you're super talented. You should be way further than when you are. And then they start to believe that. I hate when people say that. It becomes yeah, that yeah. in their mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't like and that now either. it's, well, yeah. I make music because didn't you tell me I was super talented? Didn't you tell me that I was the best? And, the, and didn't you tell me? And they hadn't done anything to be given or bestowed that, that title or that accolade yet. I agree. You know what I mean? And I think that hurts. If you're a CEO and you're listening to this, if your artist wants to do a feature and they get paid for it, Cool. Make sure they put it out right so the label can benefit as well. If you're a, a, if you're a label and you're getting booked, then make sure that you get your label's money now. If you can't get your hundred and fifty dollars from the booking fee now, you ever think you're gonna get fifty thousand of it from the two hundred and fifty thousand later? If you're not teaching these guys how to handle business now, you're ruining it for them and you're ruining it for everybody that they're gonna come in contact with. That's real. There has to be some type of business acumen. And if as a CEO- And accountability. And accountability. And as a CEO, you're not learning and executing and implementing winning strategies for you to keep tabs on things and to encourage growth, then, then, then you've already started to put yourself in a place that you won't be able to climb out of. Because the only way to climb out of the hole is to dig a deeper hole. Yeah, we're going to keep digging and we're going to put the sand up against the wall. And no, look, we almost got out of here. We just got to keep digging some more. And before you know it, you done dug you a whole pit. And now you nice and deep in there. The <laughs> sand going to cave in on your country ass. And now you're buried. <laughs> you buried yourself. And now somebody has to come to the rescue. What do they get when they come to the rescue? Do they just get to pull you out of the sand? Or do they say, hey, bro, you want this rope? Give me half. But let me also say, there isn't a school. There, 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 is, there are classes. There are schools. Now, but Chico Live. That is true. Uh, I just want to say, like, you know how, like, you know, you got school, full sale, Georgia Tech elementary well, school. I was gonna, I was gonna kick it dust. You got <laughs> elementary, elementary school. school, middle school, high school, college, right? And then um, we Higher have majors in college to teach people how to do corporate jobs, right? There are multiple schools in the country to do that. Right. You have a, you have access to it. There's not a lot of schools for music like I'm that. I'm sorry, there to, is. Business is lot. business. They have art programs at every major university in the world. I'm talking about I don't for think rappers he's talking, yeah. and like R&B singers. Yeah. Like they're not really like artist taught. development school, Artis, there's if not you will. Artist, I think that's what development means. school that someone can say, hey, I want to enroll in that and learn how like to be Motown. an artist. Like Motown. Like how someone can go to USF in Tampa, UCF, and, and, and learn how to be a marketing executive. You can But they learn, learn how to do marketing. What right. you market well, I'm, just, it's, I'm saying like for saying that, artist though How did Ray Charles learn how he's to play the, the piano? He's not saying the business side He's saying not the, the, business. I'm the, talking about the, the artist side The artist, the artist side. Side. How did Ray Charles learn how to play the piano 
blind. Correct. But practice. He's a, he practiced, but he's a he, special person. Okay, then let's go down the list of special people because the only people that inspire us to pursue this are special people. Michael Jackson. Special. Uh, special. A specialist. Prince. Janet Jackson, special. Prince. Prince. Special. Special. Garth Brooks, Jimmy Hendrix, Jimmy special. Hendrix, special. Jimmy Hendrix, special. The Beatles, special. Tupac, All of these people special. are special. They're, the school that teaches you it's you're born with the want okay, for see, more. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You want to learn me. how to be schooled. I think it's called uh, Juilliard mm -hmm. is the school where they teach you how to be mm -hmm. a musician. There are schools. There is the music school of arts in every college where they'll teach you how to write music. I was speaking with a musician just recently. Can play the guitar phenomenally. Do you know how to read music? Eh, not so much. Mm. So can you really create music? So yes, we, you could play it by ear, but you have to evolve. Pause right there. Are we saying or suggesting that if an artist is an artist and they're going to school or something like that, should they enroll? Because, you know, sometimes artists will be artists and then they, they, they major is communication, they major is... That's great as an artist. Communication is phenomenal. Should it also well, I think be, they need business. Should, it also, should they also they get branding, business classes? Marketing. Yes. There we go. Off top. Yes. Because at the end of the day, as an artist, the music is the byproduct. The films are a byproduct. The makeup line, the clothing line, the commercials, those are byproducts of your success. You have to learn how to market yourself, how to build your brand, how to establish yourself. And what you build for yourself is what opportunities will be presented to you. If you don't want to make this a business and you want to be super secret and super private, then sign up for acting school. Sign up for singing lessons. Sign up for piano lessons. If you want to become a producer, I know an artist right now that is 30, 30 plus, we know that one of the guys, 30 plus, he takes piano lessons and guitar lessons twice a week. Mm. If he wants to make beats, if he wants to stay ahead of the game, this is what he's got to do. So on his free time, there is no free time. That's what we say. That's what we always come back to as an artist. You know what the school is? YouTube. Carry your ass online and learn how to play a guitar. Take your ass on down to the pawn shop, buy a piano, come back home and Google the piano guys and get on TikTok. And there's somebody that is teaching that. There is somebody that want, that gets satisfaction. Teaching it for free. Teaching for free. it that for gets free. the pleasure out of that, like the cheat code. I you learned just how to mix to vocals invest. on on YouTube on my Adobe Audition. That's awesome. I can you just have to invest vocals. the time and the energy. You have to so want it. That's really what it is. That's what Money you, you've got to makes want it, it happen. Anger gets it done. I want one of those. I can't afford to get it done. Let me see if I can go find the program. Back in the days when you wanted to do something, you went and found you the bootleg Adobe. Yeah, you went and found you the bootleg us. Final Fruity Loops or Final Cut, and you went and went to every file sharing program. And now that you have access to all of that, you could put down a credit card and get access to somebody's entire library of high quality pictures and graphics and fonts, but you won't. Why? Because you would rather spend somebody else's money on your dream, not yours. And that's why they own everything you everything make. Everything you do. Bozo. You don't need money. You need to know what to do with your time. That's going to tell you how much money you need. Mm. Cheat code. Mm, cheat code.